Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to use Alien Skin Exposure X4 and take this horribly overexposed hazy image and process it to come up with something that looks like this. Over the past couple weeks, I've done a series of videos processing this image in different applications. In the first video, I processed it in Luminar 3 and came up with this. Then I processed it in Lightroom and came up with this. Then I processed it in Capture One and came up with this. And in the last video, I processed it in On One Photo Raw 2019 and came up with this. Now in this video, I'm going to process it in Alien Skin Exposure X4. A little backstory on the image for those of you that didn't see those previous videos. And by the way, if you haven't seen them, there'll be links to them in the description below this video. Uh, this was a very, very hot summer day. It was approaching 100 degrees. As you could see, it was a very hazy day and it was high noon. So it wasn't the best conditions for a photo. So I want to see if I could make a decent looking image in Alien Skin Exposure X4. And as you could probably notice by looking at the other images, I'm not trying to make them look the same. I'm just trying to make a good looking image. So I'm going to do my best to do that here. Now I'm going to start out right away. And I like to crop early in my processing workflow. As a matter of fact, I like to do it first usually. This image doesn't really need to be cropped, but it is crooked. So I'm going to straighten it. I'm going to uh, click on the crop tool and I'm simply going to go off the image uh, to the right till I get this double arrow and I'm going to click with the left mouse button. I'm just going to push the right side up just to straighten it. Just like that and when I'm satisfied with the crop I'll close the crop tool. Next uh, what I normally do when I process any image is I look at what it needs most. If the image is like really has really dark shadows I would go right to the shadow slider and do that first. In this case, it's super hazy. So I want to deal with that. Now, Alien Skin doesn't have really a, a hay slider, but it does have the tone curve. And it has some tools in the tone curve that will work out great. Specifically, I'm talking about these eyedroppers. You'll see there's one that has like black ink in it, then there's one with gray ink, and there's one with white ink. What you do is you uh, click on each of these eyedroppers in succession and you click on something that in the image that is that tone meaning i'm going to go on this one with the black ink and now I, my cursor turns into that eyedropper and i want to click on something in the image that should be absolute black and i think something down here in the lower left hand corner is so i'm going to click right there now that gives me a black point and you can see it already cut out most of the haze now, uh, next you would pick on something that is like a mid-tone. So I'm going to click on the middle eyedropper. That's the mid-tone. Now you can see the image temporarily reverts back to the original hazy image. Now we want to click on something that should be like middle gray. And I'm going to click on the slate wall right there. And you can see it did pretty good. Next, we'll get the white eyedropper, and what we need to do here is click on something that should be absolute white. And this, of course, is the water in the waterfall. So I'm going to click right there. And there, uh, it really cut out all the haze. You could see it did some crazy stuff to the tone curve, stuff I probably couldn't have done on my own just eyeballing it. But it did a fine job, so we got rid of the haze very easily with the tone curve. Next, I'm going to jump right up to the basic panel, and I'm going to fix the white balance. The white balance is uh, off a little bit, so I'm going to click on the eyedropper to do that. And what I'm looking for is something that's going to give me just an eye or a white balance that is pleasing to me, not necessarily um, exact for the color of uh, sunlight I saw that day. Um, everything is really, really warm when I come in here, isn't it? I don't want anything that warm. I want it kind of warm because it was a very warm day and the sun was very warm. So I'm going to be a little kind of fussy here. 
How about like right there? We'll go. And I could come in and manually adjust these sliders as well. Like if that's a tad too warm, I could pull it down. But for now, I'm going to leave it like that and start processing this way. If I don't like the way it looks, I'll come back in and readjust the white balance. Uh, next, I am, it's really bright on the right. I'm going to pull highlights down. See if we could rein those in a little bit. I'm going to pull the highlights all the way down and then open up the shadows a bit. And that will help that other side. Kind of reintroducing some of that haze, so I want to be careful. Uh, what I could do to help with the haze is contrast will always kind of cut through the haze. So I'll turn up contrast to touch. Um, let's get a white and black point. I'm going to hold in the Alt or Option key. It's Alt if you have a piece option. If you have a Mac, and click on the white slider, and you can see we're starting to see some green come through there. And as I move the slider to the right, we're getting more white. That means I'm clipping the green color channel specifically. But where you see white, I'm clipping all three color channels. I don't really want to clip any color channels. But I really can't adjust this, so I'm not clipping. So um, I'm just going to eyeball the white point right now. I'm going to adjust the white, re readjust the white balance too, because I don't like the way it looks. I'm going to go to the blacks and similarly hold in that Alt or Option key. Again, it's Alt if you have PC option if you have a Mac. And you can see I'm clipping a lot of the black channels, or I should say the color channels, the green. If you see any red in there, I don't see any blue, but I'm clipping those color channels. I kind of like to clip the blacks a little bit. Uh, that's just the way I like to do it. Uh, but I'm still going to eyeball it because it doesn't look right. The whole thing's kind of skewed because the white balance is really bad. So I'm just going to eyeball the white balance and manually move the sliders to try to help with that um, the white balance. tell you the honest God truth, if I wasn't doing the video, I would probably labor a long time trying to get the white balance uh, correct because even this doesn't look right to me. It's better than what it was, but it still isn't that good. Um, I could go to this little fly out menu here and like pick a white balance this way. There's daylight, there's cloudy, there's sh shady. Um, I'm going to stay with the manual white balance I, I did. Um, cool it off a little. Why it's a little bit more difficult to set than it may have been in the previous videos is because the tone curve uh, has the specific um, uh, red, green, and blue curves adjusted. So you could see that red, in, especially in the highlights, is a little bit too heavy. Um, I don't want to do that. So what we need to do is go to that red, and I'm going to pull it that way so there's a little bit it's it just made the red a little bit too too overbearing uh, so I'm going to manually come back in and adjust that we'll go back up to the basic I'll go through the flyout menu again and we'll go with shade shade looks pretty good right there and then I could better now adjust these other sliders Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Well, it's some clarity. I had quite a bit of clarity. Clarity looks pretty good on this image. I'm going to add some saturation. Now, similar to the other image, uh, we have uh, a situation where the sun was pretty much overhead, a little bit to my left as I was taking the photo. So we have uh, shade on the left and we have sunlight on the right. So. I want to even that out just a little bit. So I'm going to use a gradient. So I'm going to click on this little brush over here. And um, what I want to do is I want to put this on a new layer. So I'm going to click there. And I'm going to use this type of gradient on the far right. So I'll click on that. And you can see we have that gradient now. So I'm going to go down to the basic uh, panel. And I'm going to pull exposure down. Now you can see it's making the bottom half darker. Well, I just need to flip it. So it's like this. And now it's making that that diagonal right hand side darker, but I don't want it that dark, right? We just want to even it out slightly. I think that's pretty good. 
All right, that so far so good. So we'll close that down. I'm gonna go back onto our bottom layer where our original adjustments were. I'm gonna add some detail. I'm gonna zoom in, double click on the, or just click on the unit or on the image, I'm sorry. And there really wasn't any noise, as you recall, those of you that watched the other videos. This was shot at a really low ISO. And by the way, all my uh, gear I used, the camera settings and the exposure info will be in the description below this video. So you could check that out if you're you know, interested in any of that. So I'm going to turn sharpening up quite a bit. This, uh, there's before the sharpening. Uh, this image could handle quite a bit of sharpening. And it looks pretty good. We'll zoom back out. and close down detail um i really don't want to do too much more it's it's pretty colorful as it is uh, we have a really bright patch down in here so i'm going to get a brush and i'm going to use a preset of um burn it's on its own uh i have it on its own uh layer and i'm going to come in here and i'm just gonna um uh, I'm going to I'm going to turn feathering up even more to 100, have flow at 100. And now using a huge brush as you can see and I'm going to come in here and darken this a little bit. Of course, I don't want it that dark. So I'm going to go to the basic tab and pull that up a little bit. See what happens if I pull highlights down. It doesn't look right. So we'll reset that. I just want to bring exposure down a touch down in that corner. Just a little bit. Yeah, I'll go to the eraser a little bit. I got it a little bit. Oops. Whoa. My magic mouse, my Apple magic mouse is acting odd. Here we go. Erase it from up in here. Maybe. And go back here. The left bracket key to make it smaller instead of using the magic mouse. Um. I remember when uh, Lightroom used to do this, when you used a brush, it would get herky-jerky and act odd. And uh, Adobe said that <clears throat> the brush uses a lot of uh, computer resources, especially with the um, video card. And since when I record my screen while I'm doing this, it uses a lot of resources. And I suspect that's the issue I'm having right now because this doesn't normally do this acting kind of wacky like that. So as soon as I close this brush down, I think we'll be good to go. And I am. So we'll go back over to this, this bottom layer. And I think I'm just going to finish it off. I'm going to add a vignette. Um, let's go to lens correction. Did it find my lens? I don't think it did. So we'll do that. Nikon. This was a Nikon. Uh, it's not in there. Well, we can't uh, do the lens, so... So that, uh, you know, really is kind of overrated anyways in some aspects, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, let's see, what else do I want to do? I don't need to do anything with transform. Uh, we'll just go to vignette. And I'm going to pull down the vignette. Oops, go the other way. Just a little darker vignette. And that is it. I think that is our finished image. Um, there is before. And there is after. There is before. And there is after. So, again, I'm not trying to make it look like any of the other images. I'm just trying to make it look decent and use the tools and adjustments that are available, available to me in the application I happen to be using. You can see how Alien Skin Exposure X4 is just a little different. It has different controls, and it works a little differently than... Uh, some of the other applications I used already. So uh, I kind of like this rendition, though. It's a little different uh, than the other ones, and I really do uh, like it. Now, one thing I did do in the other ones real quick, and I actually probably should do here because I think it did help uh, three of the other ones. I didn't do it in the Luminar one because I didn't think of it. Um, I want to uh, brighten up uh, the, um, the waterfall. So I go to Dodge. And I'll get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. And I'm just going to brush along the waterfall. Of course, we don't want it that bright. And I'm going kind of 
a little slow with this. Like I said, the brush is acting a little wacky at the moment. That's so far so good. We'll go down to the basic uh, thing um, tab. We'll turn this down a little bit. We just want that a little brighter. So I think that's good. Close down the brush. Close down the basic tab. Now we'll do a before after. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. Now I could say that this is done in an Alien Skin Exposure X4. Again, in the description below the video, I'll have all the gear I use, the camera settings, and the exposure info. I'll also have links to the other videos where I processed this in Luminar, uh, Luminar 3 that was, but it will actually work in any version of Luminar, what I did here. Um, I did it in Lightroom, I did it in Capture One, and I did it in On One Photo Raw 2019. So, there are all the versions so far. Uh, thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.